On this week's episode of Ride the Lightning, the Tesla unofficial podcast, the Monroney sticker for the Model 3 has been spotted, revealing some very impressive energy efficiency numbers. Plus, the U.S. government takes a step forward on improving self-driving, Tesla digs in in Michigan, and more. What's happening, friends? Welcome to Ride the Lighting. It is the Tesla unofficial podcast, episode number 110 for September 10th, 2017. I'm Ryan McCaffrey, joining you, as always, each and every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern with a brand new episode. Not sure when you listen to it. That's the beauty part of the podcast. You can listen to it anytime. It's convenient. But uh, coming off of a Labor Day shortened week uh, at work here in the U.S., And I'm not sure about you guys, but as usual, it kind of ended up being a four-day work week, but nevertheless with five days worth of work crammed into it. Uh, So it was a busy week, but unfortunately, a bit of a slow Tesla news week. A little bit of a slow news week, but I've still got plenty of interesting topics to cover for you, as I uh, alluded to at the top of the show there. Also, a quick housekeeping note. I have to record next week's show a bit early because I'm leaving for vacation on Friday. Friday's going to be a travel day for me. So the podcast, uh, you won't notice. It's going to arrive on schedule. It'll be uh, scheduled, locked, and loaded for Sunday morning, as usual. But uh, it looks like it just works out that I, I need to get that show done on Thursday night, which is a bit earlier than usual. So I just want to say my apologies in advance if any big Tesla news breaks on Friday, and I happen to miss it. Obviously, if that happens, I'll pick it up the following week where I will be recording a show uh, from the New Jersey Shore. Big family reunion we're doing out there. Really, really excited to get back. I don't get a chance to go back uh, and visit family in New Jersey too often. I was last there two years ago when I went on a what was a, a, a bucket list trip for me with my uh, uncle and cousin, my uncle Tony and my cousin Pat, who and Pat's the one who has the uh, Model S. We went to the, ne- the Baseball Hall of Fame, which I'd always wanted to go to as a big baseball fan. Anyway, this time, yeah, we're rocking the shore. I'll be doing a show from the shore. So if you hear, if in uh, next or two weeks from now, show in 112, you hear you hear waves in the background. You won't. It won't. We're not that close to the beach. You'll know why. But uh, in any case, uh, I do want to mention, if you happen to support me on Patreon and you like to use the early access that that provides, you always get the show a day or two early. That way, I guess usually ends up day, uh, day, day and a half. But uh, yeah, look for next week's episode if you're a Patreon backer. Uh, it'll be uploaded late Thursday night. Anyway, let's get to the Tesla news. And I want to start by kicking it off to a very excited Ramey from the Netherlands. We know Ramey. He's a frequent caller, longtime listener, and he has good reason to be excited. So let's start with him. Ramey, you're on the air. Hey Ryan, this is Remy, your friend from the Netherlands. I just read the news about a Tesla Model 3 being spotted here uh, near Amsterdam and I wanted to chime in on this because I spoke to a Tesla employee who did have some thoughts about why it is here and the reason he said it's here, it's not in ownership of a private person or a Tesla employee, it is ownership of Tesla itself and it's here for testing purposes because it needs to get through all the legislation here in Europe. So it is uh, being tested by the European government to become street legal uh, 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 here around Europe. I believe this is true, of course I cannot guarantee that it's 100% accurate, but it does sound really plausible that this is the case. I listen to your show every week. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Bye. Real quick before I get into this, Ramey did correct himself in a follow-up call, uh, noting the Model 3 was actually spotted near Tilburg, uh, which is where, of course, those of you who may be familiar, the European Tesla Assembly plant is there. So they, uh, the cars get sent over from Fremont here in California, uh, that are going to be sold in Europe and they all go to Tilburg where they are then, they go through final assembly and, uh, and are distributed and delivered from there. So anyway, uh, Ramey, that is awesome. 
that that went down uh, not far from your backyard there. And uh, I'm pretty sure in this case, the person you talked to is correct. In fact, uh, Electric had a story up on this that they found the, the registration for the car. So yeah, no, it's, it is indeed a, a Tesla company car and you know, it's, it's obviously not going to be for sale anytime soon in Europe, un- unfortunately, because there are no doubt there are many of you in Europe that uh, listen to this show that are eagerly anticipating your Model 3. And you guys know that it's, uh, it's, you're looking at 2019 uh, uh, onward for your cars, which is, which is unfortunate. But at least I think they've said 2019 for Europe, because I think 2018 is... Just U.S. and then they've said Canada is end of 2018, I believe. So uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But anyway, you guys uh, do have a bit more to wait. And this car being over there now, uh, it's, you know, it makes perfect sense that Tesla would need to send at least one Model 3 over to Europe for regulatory approvals and other European specific testing, such as perhaps the you know their equivalent of the EPA for mileage efficiency testing uh, and that kind of thing. But cool to see that there is one running around Europe now. That that's a, an actual unicorn. It is the only one of its kind in the enti- on the entire continent. So boy, I guess you're you're you get to be a pretty cool person if you're driving that thing around on the public roads. Anyway, speaking of EPA efficiency testing. First story I wanted to do this week is uh, regarding the uh, EPA rating on the Model 3. Now, uh, there's been a lot of talk about how efficient the Model 3 is going to be relative to the S, uh, particularly in the field of, as it pertains to range, I should say. You know, because the car, we obviously, we know the Model 3 is a bit smaller. We know it's lighter as well as uh, by virtue of its smaller size. And we knew that Tesla was aiming for a, a drag coefficient of 0.21. They did not quite reach that, but the car is uh, 0.23, which is just a touch better than the S and the X. Uh, and we know, of course, the, the long-range Model 3 battery is a very, very impressive 310-mile range. And it turns out it achieves that by being extraordinarily efficient. The car is very, very efficient. A Monroney sticker, which is that, you know, window sticker, that, that sticker you see in the window of new cars that has uh, all the data of, of what the options are on the car, the, you know, VIN number, the uh, distribution of parts. In this case, by the way, the, uh, we'll, I'll get to that in a second. The car uh, is, is very, very much made up of North American parts, which, which does have an effect I'll get to in a second. But the MPGE rating, which is, of course, miles per gallon equivalent because there are no gallons, there is no gasoline, but the rating on the car, 126 MPGE city highway combined. 126, that's 131 city, 120 highway. To give you a little bit of perspective on that, the Model S ranges, depending which battery pack you get, you know, ranging from the 75, I only, I went and looked these up, but I'm only, I only went and looked up the ones that you can buy now. Uh, I didn't go back to like the 60 or the 70 or anything like that. But the, uh, the Model S now, as it is now, ranges from 98 MPGE to 104. Again, depending which battery pack you get in the Model X goes from 86 to 93. Obviously, it's just a physically bigger and a much heavier vehicle, so it's not quite as good. Uh, for a little outside comparison, the Hyundai Ionic Electric, it's a short-range electric car, but nevertheless, that actually is the most efficient car, 136 miles per gallon equivalent. So uh, it's just a, a, a the Model 3 is literally a model of efficiency. Remember, you know, it's funny. You remember back, uh, way back in the day, the Model 3 was originally going to be called the Model E, but Ford threatened a suit and they they put a stop to that. And that's when Elon and the the Tesla team went ahead with Model 3, uh, indicating third generation Tesla car. 
And Elon has since said he regrets <laughs> choosing three. E would have been so good because I, I always said, I, in fact, I probably said this back in the very, very early shows. You know, E can stand, you know, S stands for sedan, X for crossover, and Model E would have stood for, for me, everyone, because it's the Tesla for everyone. But fast forward to now this, uh, the car as it is in its final form, 126 miles per gallon equivalent uh, is, the, that Model E could have stood for efficiency, because my good, or, or just efficient, that, because that is, that is a very, very impressive number. Now also, which I touched on a second ago, teased you with, the Model 3 is also made up, which the Monroni sticker details, of 75% North American parts, 50% from the U.S. or Canada, 25% of the car from Mexico. And what that does it is uh, it exempts the Model 3 from any tariffs anywhere in North America. So it can be sold U.S., Canada, Mexico, and there are not going to be any, any tariffs, duties, anything like that placed on it. Therefore, it allows the car to be sold at the lowest price possible in both Canada and Mexico. So that is really, really good news. I mean, for any, you know, I'm not sure this would actually happen, but for any naysayers, when you get your Model 3, for any naysayers that might come up to you crowing on about Chevy or Ford or something else being, you know, a real American company... Well, you can just file this away in the back of your mind that the that the Model 3 is 75% North American. The Bolt, meanwhile, just for comparison's sake, made up of 26% U.S. or Canadian parts, and that is obviously due in large part to the fact that the uh, all the the battery and electronics, the battery elect, battery electronics, and the battery them, batteries themselves, the packs are from LG, which is a you know Korean company there. So anyway, I don't know how or why something like that specific of an example would ever come up, but if it does ever come up, but you know some fudster brings it up to you, now you you've got that card to play. Okay. Next up, speaking of legislation, a uh, couple of more le- actually I guess that's not a segue. I didn't even talk anything about legislation. Anyway, on the <laughs> moving on to legislation, you can tell I'm doing the show before dinner tonight. Normally, I, it's af- I do the show after dinner. I'm a little loopy because I'm real <laughs> hungry. Anyway, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a self-driving car bill this week, and it did so unanimously, which uh, regardless of which side of the aisle you find your politics on, that doesn't happen too often these days. It's great to see. H.R. 3388 states, quote, The purpose of this act is to memorialize the federal role in ensuring the safety of highly automated vehicles as it relates to design, construction, and performance by encouraging the testing and deployment of such vehicles. So basically, what this bill is is doing is it's aiming to have a a national set of regulations so that you don't have weird and possibly conflicting stuff going on on a state-by-state level. Uh, which could be confusing for us owners, us drivers, and problematic uh, for car owners and car manufacturers alike. So good to see the uh, federal government taking a proactive step forward there. Now, here's the segue that I was, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was a little too soon on earlier. Speaking of legislative Tesla news, Tesla is digging in in their uh, battle with Michigan while their case litigates uh, in the state. They are opening a new gallery at the Somerset Collection Mall in Troy, Michigan. If you happen to be familiar with the area, familiar with that mall, you'll be able to go there and visit the Tesla gallery in the not-too-distant future. Tesla issuing a statement on this saying, quote, it's unfortunate that Michigan law takes away rights from consumers in order to protect local car dealers. Tesla continues to fight against that law so that Michigan consumers can enjoy the freedom to buy cars as they wish. In the meantime, as Tesla's legal challenge proceeds, we are expanding our presence in Michigan in order to educate consumers about the benefits of Tesla's vehicles and sustainable energy products in a fun and engaging environment. 
Tesla's new gallery at the Somerset Mall allows anyone interested in Tesla, including the thousands of Model 3 reservation holders in Michigan, to learn about our technology, energy products, and cars, including the fastest accelerating it's, and pardon me, and safest production sedan and SUV that have ever been built, end quote. This is a smart move, in, in my opinion, on Tesla's part, because the bigger the presence that they can somehow manage in the state of Michigan, the harder it gets for the state to argue in court that they can't, that Tesla can't and shouldn't be allowed to do business there. So, I, I, I got to say, though, I really do hope this ends soon so that those of you that are in Michigan, that Michigan Tesla fans and owners and soon to be owners can start getting every single perk that the rest of us in Tesla legal states have access to. Not to mention just the the non Tesla owners and reservation holders in Michigan actually get a fair shake to go in and, and uh, buy a car if they darn well please in, in the, you know, without having to go through the middleman at the dealership there. Uh, let's move forward with noted, in fact, the last story this week, like I said, it was a bit of a quiet week, but noted Tesla bull Adam Jonas, who I've talked about on the podcast before, he works as an analyst for Morgan Stanley, and he sort of specializes in Tesla. He's uh, He covers them on a regular basis. He is indeed bullish on the Tesla Semi, which, as you may remember, is scheduled to be unveiled this month. This month is coming up. In fact, on that note, I would expect that there is a very good chance I'll be able to relay that reveal date to you in time for next week's show, because here we are, uh, it's what September, gosh, what is it? What is it even September 7th? As I record this eighth, I don't even remember what the date is, but you know, we're, we're a week plus into September here. And, uh, this, if this event's happening in September, even the end of September, the Tesla is going to have to send out the invites a good week and a half to two weeks in advance. So, uh, look for some potential news on that. On next week's show, I I probably am not going to be able to make it to that one if it's in Los Angeles, which I expect it will be down at the Hawthorne Design Studio. That's where the reveals have happened for the uh, the X, the three, and and I think even back in the day, uh, maybe even well, actually the, the Model S. I don't know if they had the Hawthorne Design Studio back then. Uh, you know, well well before the Model S came out. Anyway, point being, the semi reveal is probably going to be down there. Uh, and yeah, I, I'm unlikely to be able to make that one, unfortunately. Just uh, It's probably just going to be tough to, to travel on down there for it. But in any case, I'll, of course, be covering it and bringing you all the highlights, as I always do. Anyway, Adam Jonas believes that the Tesla Semi could be hugely disruptive in the trucking industry. He issued a note to investors saying, quote, We believe Tesla's reveal of its autonomous electric Class 8 semi-truck this month could be the biggest catalyst in trucking in decades and potentially set off separation between the technology leaders and the laggards among carriers, shippers, truck OEMs, and suppliers, end quote. Those are some big, big words there. That's some bold, bold statements from Adam Jonas, and I and it's I hope he turns out to be correct. You know, I hope even though it's obviously something that I think ninety nine point nine nine percent of of those of you listening to this, maybe even a hundred percent. I'm not sure if any of you out there are a trucker or own a trucking company. Maybe. Uh, in fact, if you are, I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear your thoughts on uh, Tesla's looming entry into that market. Give me a call on the Ride the Lightning hotline. I'll give you the number here coming up, of course, later in the show. Anyway, uh, Jonas added that he believes, he believes, so this is just his conjecture here, but it's, it's uh, obviously it's his job to cover Tesla just as it is uh, mine, although he gets, <laughs> he gets paid a, a big time salary for it, no doubt. But in any case, he, uh, he believes that the Tesla Semi will go on sale in 2020 cost $100,000 if you lease the battery separately. I'm not quite sure how that would work. Um, 
but he also predicts that the semi will have a range of 200 to 300 miles and be up to 70% cheaper to operate than a traditional semi truck. Now, my take on this, given that, that there should still be unveiling, Tesla should still be unveiling this truck this month, uh, you know, and it's, it's so September 2017, you know, a release date of three years from now seems, seems about right. But, you know, Tesla is still a relatively, they're growing a lot. You know, they're up to 33 plus thousand employees now, but they are still a relatively lean and mean operation. So I just wonder if Tesla has the design and engineering uh, resources to pull off the semi-truck and Model Y in the next three years. Uh, you know, that's, I have to presume that all hands were on deck for Model 3 over the past, you know, probably 12 to 18 months, um, or at least certainly 12 to 18 months prior to the Model 3 reveal in March of last year. So maybe uh, they probably have all moved on to, largely all of them have moved on to the Y and presumably the Semi as well. But, you know, I mean, I, I, I do realize I'm saying, I'm talking about splitting resources between Model Y and, a, and the Semi truck. And obviously those two vehicles could not be more different. But the fact of the matter is that Tesla still only has so many resources to play with regardless of how it's using them. So I'm interested to see what they what they roll out. Uh, and yes, that was a subtle that was a subtle Optimus Prime reference. Hashtag semi truck jokes. <laughs> anyway, again, I'm loopy. I'm very I'm starving right now. I'm waiting for uh, waiting for my food to come out of the oven. Anyway, uh, that is it for the news this week. Again, like I said, a little bit of a slow news week, but still some interesting stories to talk about. Got a handful of really great calls, as usual, coming up from you guys here right after the break in the Ride the Lightning hotline. So stay tuned for that right after this. All right, you know where we are in the show. It's Ride the Lightning Hotline time, the part of the show where, of course, it's your time to shine with your calls. You can record them on your smartphone and then email me the recording. Teslapodcast at gmail.com is the email address to send those to or email me about anything else the Tesla related that's on your mind. Or you can use the handy dandy toll free Ride the Lightning Hotline to call in and leave a message anytime, day or night. If you've got a question, comment, discussion topic for me for the show, the toll-free number is 1-888-989-8752. Again, that's 1-888-989-TSLA. And if you know someone special with an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, hey, I've got an upcoming birthday. I'm going to be, uh, I'm coming up, oh, I'll actually, that's when I'll be in, in New Jersey, which will be, it'll be fun. Anyway. Uh, if you've got an upcoming birthday, anniversary, graduation, or some other special occasion, you can give them a unique gift of recorded voices from friends and family telling them why they're special. The recordings can be podcasted or put onto a keepsake. Please visit lifeonrecord.com if you'd like to learn more. Also, I want to mention real quick, too, that the uh, monthly bonus show, if you are a $10 or higher Patreon supporter of mine on uh, patreon.com slash Podcast. You can now get the September edition of the bonus show, which is all the extra excellent phone calls that come in that I can't get to during the uh, regular show. So uh, Sam from New York is, is on that, uh, Cody from Minnesota, Jacob from Sweden, Mike from Pennsylvania, Ken from Denver, Chip from Florida, Jason from Newport Beach, Vahe from Vegas, Lawton from Chicago. They're all there. And uh, the topics covered this month include things like Model Y's seating capacity, uh, self-parking, Model 3 wheels, the whole quote-unquote something special that Model 3 uh, day one reservation holders were promised by Elon. So uh, again, if you are a $10 or higher Patreon supporter, be sure to check out, go to Patreon, the patreon.com slash Tesla podcast, log in and check that out. And if you're not, feel free to consider Doing so, I would certainly be grateful. Anyway, let's get to the Ride the Lightning Hotline, kicking it off with our friend, longtime caller, Mike from Charlottesville, reacting 
to the uh, dash cam story from last week about Tesla adding dash cam functionality to the Tesla fleet coming up in the future. So, Mike, take it away. Hey, Ryan. It's Mike from Charlottesville again. So I just got done listening to the latest episode, and I have something to add to the um, dash cam. So with the integration of the Tesla app, maybe when your car is parked and you're not around it, say someone approaches your car, maybe you get a notification on the app on your phone to enter like a surveillance mode where you can have access to the cameras on it the uh, car and have a live feed and maybe you'd be able to honk the horn or or do something to deter whoever's near your car to get away from it um just wanted to see what you think i think this would be a really good idea and really easy to implement from a software standpoint so uh, keep doing what you're doing and uh i hope to hear from you soon interesting thought mike the so the big hole that i can that i think i can punch in your otherwise great idea is this there are going to be many many times where there are a lot of people around your car who aren't a threat. Say you're parked in your town's main street and people are just walking by, etc. So I'm not sure what the solution is there, but everything else you said sounds great and is something that I would be delighted to see Tesla implement. I mean, if you could go into your Tesla app on your phone at any time and access the cameras just to check in on the car, that'd be fantastic. I mean, the app already does let you go in and honk the horn. You can do that right now. Uh, P.S., by the way, if Tesla does this uh, and calls it surveillance mode or reconnaissance mode and lets me access it through an Apple Watch, I will totally buy an Apple Watch because combined with summon and eventually self-driving, it would totally be Knight Rider made real. And I grew up Loving Knight Rider as a kid. It's funny, you know, just a a quick aside. You know, I grew up, I was born in 1980. And 80s TV, like both cartoons and live action, cars were such a big part of entertainment. I really think that's a a big reason why I'm such a car person. You know, you had had, uh, Transformers, you had Knight Rider, you had... uh, if any of you remember the cartoon Mask, Mobile Armor and Strike Command, you, that was all vehicles. You had Vehicle Voltron. You had, um, I believe it was called Johnny Turbo, the kid who was like some science experiment where when he gets hot, he morphs into a car, a sports car. There were so many car-related shows, both cartoons and live action in the 80s. I mean, even like G.I. Joe had vehicles, like... Yeah, so many. It's funny. I feel like those have kind of gone away. Like that, they they weren't there in the '90s and the 2000s and now. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Our next call comes to us from Marty, who has a specific idea in mind for Model Three, and also uh, something about the battery charging situation on the semi truck. So, Marty, take it away. Yeah, the name is Marty. I was thinking they could come out with a Model N for naked which means any of the cars can come with zero paint, so the cars can be wrapped, custom wraps. They could also have no tires or wheels, no interior, meaning uh, one or no seats, um, for people or shops that want to kind of really customize the cars. And as far as battery swapping, I know that's dead for cars, but I think it's a kind of a no-brainer that the semi-truck reveal will probably have uh, quick uh, changes. So after 250 miles or so, they could always swap out the battery packs on a semi. So it theoretically could go across country fairly easily. After every four hours, they would just have a a new uh, fully charged uh, pack go into the uh, 200 to 300 mile range from what we've heard um, semi trucks. That's it. Enjoy the show. Thanks. Well, Marty, I'm not entirely sure you were being serious with the first part of your call there, but uh, to, in, in the event you were, I, I don't think you'll ever be able to buy an unpainted Tesla. Although, I will say this, fun fact, in the very, very first days of the Model S when the Tesla factory first started spitting out cars, you could pay a large sum of money. I wish I remembered what it was. It might be 10 grand, might have even been a little more. But you could pay a large extra sum of money and get any custom paint color 
you wanted. I actually, I got to go to the uh, the opening event, which was the beta, uh, the, the Model S beta event, where they gave factory tours to everybody of the brand new factory, and then everybody got test rides in the, in the beta Model S's at the time. And uh, I, I remember when I walked through on my tour group through the paint shop, uh, yeah, they actually, they don't do that on the tour now, but you would walk through the paint shop. And yes, like I think somebody asked and uh, the, whoever was leading our tour said, yeah, you know, you can, you can do that. So um, there were a few cars that were made. I mean, I know, th- there, I know of two specifically that were custom painted from the factory. George R.R. R. Martin has an early Model S. His is purple. And then uh, the, who I, I believe it's the, paint shop manager, or at least the, if it's not the, that same person now, it was the one at the time, because uh, I actually saw this car with my own eyes in the uh, in the, the Tesla factory parking lot, and I asked uh, uh, an employee friend that I was with, and, and that I believe, he, I remember him telling me that it was the paint shop managers. Anyway, it was a metallic lime green. It's a very, very interesting, very bold. I have pictures of it somewhere. Um, I, in fact, I'm sure I posted them to my Twitter. This would have been, I mean, gosh, probably four years ago at this point. It would have been a while. But anyway, yeah, those, those are the two that I know of, and I'm sure there are a few more. Anyway, uh, as far as the Tesla semi-truck goes, I'm totally with you on that. I, I agree that uh, battery swap stations that are located at strategic points along major trucking routes, that makes a ton of sense for Tesla's semi-truck both uh, for as far as the human drivers are concerned, and it makes sense even for when those Tesla semis become autonomous and can just be operated around the clock. You know, so you know, truckers, truck drivers now are used to driving a lot of time, many, many hours uh, straight through to, to get to their destination. And battery swap stations would only certainly help an electric truck be able to, to do the same thing. And then when they're autonomous, there's obviously no need for uh, for rest at all. They can go round the clock 24-7 until they, they reach their destination. Two more calls this week. First is David from New Orleans, who uh, calls in with regard to natural disasters. Uh, of course, we've obviously, everybody's seen the news and what's been going on in the southeastern uh, United States. And certainly David, uh, having having been through Katrina in New Orleans, so he's uh, got a point here about about Tesla and their preparedness for charging and superchargers in a natural disaster situation. So David, I will turn the floor over to you, sir. Hey Ryan, this is David from New Orleans. Hey, I thought I'd give you a call in the wake of the storm that hit Houston. Something I think um, people really need to start thinking about, especially with the Model 3 coming out. Um, Of course, I'm from New Orleans, so I know something about storms and evacuation. I rode out Katrina, and then I evacuated after, and I lived on a generator for a month. Um, But the thing that people aren't thinking about is we had a mandatory evacuation, and after what happened in Houston and what happened in New Orleans, Local, state, and federal officials are going to be even quicker to call for mandatory evacuations of many, many coastal cities. Miami, Houston, New Orleans, all up and down the uh, Gulf Coast and the East Coast. So what I'm afraid is going to happen is, especially now with the Model 3 coming out and so many more people getting electric cars, if they call for a mandatory evacuation you're going to see the superchargers roughly, you know, outside whatever city is evacuating, especially the ones two to 300 miles outside the city that's evacuating along those main routes become overwhelmed. I mean, you're only talking, you know, eight superchargers here and there, depending on the route that the people are evacuating, those superchargers won't be able to handle it. Look what happens on the west coast at Vandenberg Air Force Base when they have a SpaceX launch you got all these um, SpaceX fans come down from San Francisco to see the launch 
And those superchargers, just from those few people, get overwhelmed as people need to recharge to head back. Just imagine when you have a city evacuating. I really think before something bad happens, Tesla really needs to look at this. And everybody who owns electric cars really needs to think about this as far as what size battery they get for longer range. Anybody who lives in a city that can get hurricanes or any other major disaster. I really think Tesla needs to get on this before it happens. And one solution may be to have um, portable superchargers, like an 18-wheeler with multiple superchargers on it with portable power units that can be rushed into an area, you know, that's evacuating. You know, there's, there's a lot of different things they can look at, but it's something I really feel they really need to look at now because with this, you're not talking about people sitting in line for fueling up with a gas car. It takes, you know, five to eight minutes. You're going to have people that are going to charge up for an hour or more because they're going to want to be at 100%. So potentially, you could have people sitting there for days. So just something I think people out there really need to start thinking about what's going to happen when you have to evacuate a city with electric cars. Um, So just a little food for thought. Let people out there ponder it. Enjoy your show. Take care. Bye. Thanks for your call, David. I agree that it's definitely something to consider. On the plus side, at least the superchargers on the way out of these affected cities stand a better chance of actually working. Whereas we've seen a lot of news reports, uh, obviously recently, of gas stations in these disaster situations that are just running out of gas, which which has definite consequences, none of which... Are good, but I don't think Tesla should necessarily lay out huge supercharging infrastructure as a as a precaution in these sort of you know coastal areas where where these types of things are more likely to happen because you know it's a you're, you're talking about a relatively rare and very unpredictable natural force. I mean, I, I'm not saying that Tesla should turn a blind eye to it, to be clear, but you know you've got to worry about the day to day that you can predict and have. A reasonable amount of control over. Also, one other thing to point out from from your call, uh, people don't need to charge to 100% at a supercharger, even in the scenario that you describe, because the cars and the system are actually, this meaning the supercharging system, they're actually designed for you to charge to whatever you need to get you to the next supercharger. It's a, it's a big thing that Elon has talked about in the past that, that Tesla has a uh, bit of a challenge in trying to retrain people's brains from being used to, they've, they've spent their whole lives filling up their gas tanks to 100% on, on the interstate on a road trip, not to mention everywhere else. Uh, but that's not how the supercharging system optimally works. You charge for you know the 20, 30, maybe 40 minutes, uh, that gets you up to you know 60, 70, 80 percent, and then you you move on uh, to the next supercharger, and you don't need to charge to your uh, full regular 80 or 90 percent, depending on what you have your car set to, until you reach your destination and you have destination charging there, and the the speed of the charge is not quite as important. All right, our final call this week comes to us from Dane. Uh, he has a uh, bit of a bit of a sticky situation with his lease uh, and and regards to trying to get his hands on a Model Three and the, the timing of that. So let's see if we can help Dane. Go ahead, Dane. Hey Ryan, Dane here. I'm a big fan of the podcast. Love what you do. I actually just recently moved out of Palo Alto, but while I was living there and and after the Model Three came out. After every podcast that you put out um, detailing more about the Model 3, I'd go up to Tesla headquarters and kind of spy on the Model 3s uh, sitting in front of headquarters charging, just kind of checking out the new things that I had learned through your podcast. Really excited for those Model 3s to come out. I'm con- I have a hybrid car, a lease, that is up in May 2018, and I'm convinced that, or I've, told- I've committed myself to never buy an and another ICE car. It's either hybrid, a suboptimal compromise, as Elon would put it, 
or an electric car, i.e. a Tesla. I'm really tempted to buy a Chevy Bolt. I know that's heresy to say on this podcast, mostly because they're available. I could go out and buy one right now. I don't have a Model 3 reservation, and that's why I'm calling. Um, there's reports that pe- a lot of reservations are being canceled. Um, is there a way or some kind of resource, or have you heard of a way to buy a reservation off of someone that has one? Um, and I'm willing to pay a premium, more than the 1000 bucks for it. So um, really thinking that the best investment I can make for buying a car is going to be a Model 3 um, for my budget and would love to get one before 2019. Thanks. Thanks for all your hard work. Thanks for the call, Dane. First of all, I want to know, I want to clarify, it's absolutely not hearsay to, to state that you're interested in a Bolt. Again, I've, I've talked about it. I think it's I think it's a, a seems like a really great car overall. I mean, I, I think its primary weakness, that it's my opinion on this, is is the total lack of a high speed interstate charging network for the Bolt. I, I just think it's going to be very difficult to take that car on road trips and potentially have it be your primary family, you know, your, your primary vehicle for all uses. It's not not impossible, but it's far from convenient compared to uh, any of the Teslas, including the Model Three. But uh, anyway, to your question, no, I mean. Uh, I'm afraid that you cannot buy a reservation. That is that is the the long held stance from Tesla that that's been around since well before the Model Three. They had that with the the uh, X and the S as well. Uh, the, they're not saleable. They're not transferable. So the best thing you could do, and this is a tall order, but it's this is this is the one way I know of that you could do this. You could find someone. Who's, if you can find someone willing to part with their reservation, uh, develop you can develop a very very trustworthy relationship with them. Uh, I mean, whether or not you were to slip that person some money for that <laughs> for that trust is is between you and that person. But because they would have to take delivery of the car, go th- you know go through the whole process, ordering delivery, the whole thing, uh, and have the car in their name, but then also put your name on the title. Uh, and then eventually transfer their name off. So that's a that's a tall order. Not impossible, but uh, not as easy as simply, you know, transferring or purchasing a reservation from somebody sort of cleanly. Uh, and and I, I believe also I've read in that scenario. Don't quote me hundred percent on this. I'm not I'm not totally certain on it, but I don't think you'd be able to get the tax credit in that scenario either. But but let me let me ask you this before I let you. I don't want to. I want to offer some sort of optimism here, some sort of productive suggestion. Uh, have you considered maybe a used Model S? You know, the, I know you talked about the Bolt, and and hey, go go grab one if it works for you. But depending on your budget, you know, you might be able to find a used Model S that has at least hardware one autopilot and can take care of your needs for a while. Because you said you know if if you were willing to pay somebody. For their Model Three reservation, maybe you know I, I don't know what your budget is. You didn't say, so maybe uh, a used S could be a, a solution for you. But I hope hope you're able to sort something out. Um, I mean, if you do want to get your hands on a Model Three and you can't find anybody to to buddy up with uh, in order to to get their reservation, I mean, I would suggest you know put down a the reservation the the thousand dollar deposit now. And then you know you you you'd at least know like okay 2019 my number is going to come up and I I can uh, go ahead and purchase the car but you know th- there will eventually come a point where there isn't a huge waiting list for a Model Three particularly as production ramps but you know for the for, for the long foreseeable future Tesla is going to be very supply constrained not demand constrained so if you are still interested in the three. I would I would recommend taking a you know seriously considering putting that thousand dollar deposit down. Remember, it is fully refundable the deposit. I mean, you are yes, you're giving Tesla a thousand dollar no interest loan, but uh, it is your way to secure a place in line. So hope I could help you out in at least in some way there, Dane. All right, if uh, if you would like to participate in 
the hotline portion of the show here, which I, I strongly encourage. I welcome it. I love this part of the show. Please either record your question on your smartphone and email me the file to teslapodcast at gmail.com or just give a call toll-free anytime to the Ride the Lightning hotline at one 888 989 8752. A few parting thoughts for you here and a couple of plugs right after this. I want to congratulate Will from the UK who uh, is expecting delivery of his Model X in about 30 days from now. He sent me a very, very kind email. Uh, saying he enjoys the show, and he uh, he went ahead and ordered a Model X and used Gordon from Hawaii's referral code, so he got himself a thousand bucks off as well as the free unlimited lifetime supercharging on that Model X. So uh, congratulations, Will! And that means there's still uh, a few. There should still be, I think, at least two, maybe even three, free unlimited lifetime supercharging referrals left from uh, Gordon in Hawaii. So if you're planning on buying a Tesla, an S or an X, sadly it does not apply to the three, but if you're getting an S or an X, get yourself a thousand bucks off, get yourself the free unlimited lifetime supercharging on that vehicle by using this referral code. Type it into your browser, ts.la slash Gordon1872. Again, the Patreon, I mentioned that earlier. If you Get a lot out of this podcast, as I hope you do, and you might, and you you feel you, you see fit to maybe uh, want to support me a little bit. You can do so on my Patreon, and that page is patreon.com. That's p a t r e o n. Patreon.com slash Tesla Podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at dmc underscore ryan. You can email me anytime Tesla Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, what else? Ah, the Patreon producers, the lovely folks who uh, support me at the $20 level or higher each month. Jeff Bartram, Paul Hussey, DJ Harbaugh, Pete White, Wolfgang Obergen, George Cassioppo, ZL Klein, David Brander, Jonathan Wales, Scott Gillis, Michael Lucas, Alexi Heft, Lisa Kaz, Michael Opre, Logan Willis, Matthew Parra, Michael Lester, Robert Maracle, Vince Vaughn, John Lasher, Harold Plug, Jason Chalukas, Emotion Rentals, Richard Ouellette, Andreas Cohen, and Sean Fournier. Thanks to all of you so much. Uh, If you need some Tesla accessories for your car and or yourself, give a look at what they've got over at abstractocean.com and get everything you want in your cart. And when you get to checkout, use the coupon code RTLPODCAST in order to get 20% off of your order. Thanks to abstractocean.com for providing that discount to the Ride the Lightning audience. And if you don't already subscribe to this podcast, make it uh, easier to get because it'll just download itself to you. Subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn, or you can pick up individual episodes and the uh, and or the RSS feed for the show at the hosting site, which is teslapodcast.libsyn, L-I-B-S-Y-N, dot com. All right, it's been a fun week. Uh, I mean, like I said, not, not the... Uh, Not the sexiest week of Tesla news, but still some interesting topics. Hope you enjoy the show this week as much as I enjoyed making it. And happy electric motoring, of course. And I will see you back here next week. Again, uh, Patreon friends, look for the show even a little earlier. It should be done on Thursday late at night if you want to get it a little extra early. Thanks, everybody, and I'll see you next week.